What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And today we're going to be talking about the map container type for your variables and different ways that you can use them to be able to store a lot of different types of information. So let's go ahead and open up a project and start looking at that map container type. So I have here a fresh third person project. This is actually going to be what we're going to be using for all of the data series that we're going to be doing. So this is technically the first part where I'm going to show you guys how to be able to use a mapping system to be able to store a bunch of different information. And you can use that to actually call that information back. And it's really, really, really good if you have a lot of different of like different va variables or values that you want to keep within a blueprint and you want to call them back later. Well, rather than having a giant list of them, you can create what's called a map of this variable and it'll create almost like an array function but it's, it's easier to show you guys so we'll go ahead open up the bp third person character blueprint here now once you have this up we'll just go ahead and pull the event graph up here and we're going to make a new variable type now what we're going to do is we're going to start with very something very simple with just creating a simple list of booleans and giving ourselves an easy way to be able to search for what boolean type we need so what we're going to do is we're going to take our variable we're going to name this bool underscore list or bool map however you want to name it but we're not going to make this an actual boolean type variable because what we're talking about is the variable container types which if we go over to the details panel here with this bool list selected and we go to this little drop down menu here next to the little bread icon you're going to see that map is actually not an option we can make it a single or an array but we can't make it a set and we can't make it a map so what we need to do instead instead of a boolean we're going to make this a string instead and then from here, now we can go back to this little drop down menu and change it to map. Now, the second we do that, you'll see that we have another variable here. This will another variable type. Now, let me explain to you a little bit about how this works. Now, I, I'm sure there's a ton of other applications than what I have discovered so far. But from what I have been able to tell, the first value here, the string value or integer value, whatever you use, is going to be the value you're actually going to use to find whatever information is over here. So use this to find the information, and this is the information that you're going to look for. Now, again, we are making a Boolean list, so we're going to change this from an integer to a Boolean then compile and save. Now you'll see that on our variable icon here, we have a little pink nodes for our the input for the name and then red for what the actual information is. So this is kind of what, you know, a lot of this plus the way it actually functions is what tells me that this is what you use to find this information. Now, if you look at the default values here, we have a bool list and we have map elements zero, but we have a plus al uh, for an add elements and then also to remove the elements. So let's say if you wanted to have variable types for if you're in combat, right? So we can go in, click the little uh, add element button here, and then we'll just type in combat so now we have a name for a combat with a boolean associated to it so we can go again and go out of stamina and then again a boolean value that we can use here we can go in again out of mana and again a boolean value that we can use so now let's say we have these boolean values how do we call them so we can use them while well, we'll compile and save and we'll grab our bool list and we'll get it now from here all we have to do is drag off and we can just type in map and you'll see that there's a bunch of options here. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on find. Now you'll see that here we have this little input for a key that we can reference for a string. So if I want to get the value for combat, I can just type in combat. And then the value for that will pop out here. So whatever value I set within this. It's just going to return combat because that's the string reference that I've told it I want it to find. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky, though. You have to make sure that the name, integer, vector location, whatever it is using to find that information, whether it be a Boolean, an enumeration, a struct, whatever, you need to make sure that it is exactly the same. This means spelling and everything has to be exactly the same so there are ways to make this easy for yourself one way that i would say that i'm actually currently messing around with is to make a struct with all the names that you're going to use for your map and then use that struct to actually you know this way you don't have to type it in multiple times it's already typed in once and you can use the struct name reference to be able to pull it back in so that's really i'm going to do a lot of videos on structs enums data tables all that good stuff that's what this series is going to be starting but 
I had a request in my Discord uh, when I was talking about the map type container. So I wanted to make sure to put out this video today to show you guys some of the really, really cool stuff that you can do with this. Now, as I had stated, you don't just have to use Boolean types. I can actually also, if I instead switch it from a Boolean, now I'm just going to make sure to delete what's in here and also delete the default values because if you don't, it might crash. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you keep it clean, you'll be fine. If you get a little bit messy with it, well, I'm not responsible for what happens. <laughs> it's, it's the Unreal Engine, you know? Um, but we're going to switch this Boolean type to a texture. And we can change this to a texture 2D, just like this, object reference. So now I have a string value and a texture 2D that I can use. So if I go compile and save, and then I just add an element, I can now select a list from a list of textures and let's say I want stone, right? Like, so let's say if I'm swapping textures around, right? I want to be able to use a texture. Let's go texture 2D, boom, brick stone. And then just type in stone. I can bring this out, get the list, type in find. And then from here, I can just, again, type in stone and it'll output that object value. So this is where it gets really cool. You can save a lot of different information. Now, you don't just have to load this on like basically before your game is loaded. You can also live load this information as well. So if we were to take out our, our list here, we'll actually change this from a texture 2D to an object value or an actor value, I'm sorry. We'll compile and save. We'll drag out our bool list. We're just gonna do a get actor of class. This way we just have a um, an output node that has an actor type. We're not actually gonna put an actor of class in there. But if we go to the bool list here and we just type in add, now you'll see we have a object value reference as well as a string value reference. So I can go ahead, plug this into the object reference and then the name, I can make it whatever I want. So, so we'll go BP third person character, right? So we'll make this as the, um, the object actor reference and we'll just set this as player right so we'll add that in and we'll go event begin play so this will be the first thing it does is go and get actor of class bp third person character and add that to our list now if i go event tick and then i go and i get our bool list here if i pull off of this now as you can see there's no map elements in here already but if i go find and i just type in player event tick print string and then i'll take this actor type plug it into the in string value now obviously it'll just go to get display name because that's all it can do but what i'm doing is just getting my bool list and then looking for whatever is tagged as player which is going to be this tag with this actor object type and then it's going to return it back up here now the cool thing is is about the find is that you have this little boolean value that if nothing was found you can use this as a branch stopper so i can actually if i wanted to if nothing was found i can go event tick and make sure that if nothing was found it doesn't do anything but if something is found go ahead and you know go on and print that string in the display name so this is something that allows you some really good flow control but again there's zero map elements right now but if i hit play BP third person character gets printed out on my screen because I have saved a character type, actor type. And when you use this, if I delete the get display name, pull off of the find, and actually, no, we won't pull off the find yet. Uh, we'll do a cast to BP third person character. Now, here's the thing. I'm not actually going to click play because this will crash the engine because I'm casting to my third person character in my third person character. So this is not going to work, but that's only because I don't have another out, um, actor type to be able to run this through. But check this out with the player and the actor reference here. You can plug this into a cast node, which means that you can cast to the specific instance of that character type. This is very useful for creating very unique instances of when you have multiple things spawned into the world, weapon 001 might have different information than weapon 002 or weapon 005 or AI 001, AI 005. 
all of the different instances in the world have their own individual categorization based off of like a numerical hierarchy. And realistically, this allows you to be able to set that information by again, just creating somewhere to be able to call that information. Now I like string values. Now you cannot use text values. I tried this at first and text values just like booleans cannot be mapped. However, strings operate the way that you would imagine a text would. So it's all good. The string also allows you to be able to use this information to be able to also use in like data table row finds and things like that. Like I'm, I'm working with a lot of interesting ways to be able to use the mapping system right now, but I just wanted to get some information out for you guys on some really cool things that you can do, because again, it's more powerful than an array because you can set it all up and meet like just on a simple default value system. And finding the information is just as easy as having some sort of text, you know, just typing in what you're looking for. And it's so, so e easy to do. And you can cast to and get, you know, specific blueprint data this way. You can get actor location. You can get a whole bunch of references and a whole bunch of information by storing it, utilizing the map data and just having some sort of return value. So you can use the same principle when using line traces and have that detected actor be whatever it adds in. In, you know, and you can have certain checks in certain systems to make sure that that actor type gets added into the type that it needs to be. But again, it's creating almost an array of very specific information that you can then call back and look to later. And you can make multiple of these map types to be able to have multiple different pieces of information and just have all of your different Boolean values and all your different vector values all within a mapping system. And this way you can just find those values by looking for them with the find option. So a quick stitch here on the video, guys, I realized when I was going through the editing that I actually forgot to show you guys how to be able to change any information that you might have added into your map. Now, what I mean by this is we can create map elements, we can add map elements, but we can also change the values on the elements that we're mapping. And it's done very easily by if we go and get our bool list here and we get the setter node for this, just like this. Now you'll see that we have the map list on both sides, both an input and output, but we can't just input like a, an object value or a Boolean value. So if you wanna be able to set information pull off of the setter node from the input, type in make map. From here, you can actually set a key value. So if you have, for example, an actor object set as player, you can change what that value is going to be because it's going to look for the string value and then change the actor value associated to that string value. So that's just how you would change in this, the same way that work would work for Booleans. Um, in any other type, any information you're changing, you can use the string, integer, whatever value you're using to be able to actually recall the information. You just type that into here, and then you can change the value associated to that key. So I just want to make sure to put that in because I realized, like I said, when I was going through the recording, I had forgotten to toss that in here. So just make sure you guys know that you can add, you can change, and you can also set default values. So that's really it for the map guys. I mean, it's very straightforward. It's just all about how you set the information, what you need for it, just creating one type to be able to search for it. And then the actual piece of information that it's going to search for. And again, it uses enumerations. You can use structs. One thing I will say, actually, just because I see this here, it will say interfaces are an option. Do not use an interface. I made this mistake and it crashed my engine because it said it was non-compatible. So even though it's listed as an option, it's really not. Don't let it fool you. But enumerations work just fine. Structs work just fine. And regular variable information types work just fine as well. So everything else works just fine, just the interfaces. And in all honesty, I wouldn't even know what you would use an interface for in this type of a system. So it doesn't really make much sense anyways. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, we're going to have a lot more information coming out when it comes to setting and storing data. The next one, we're going to be going over the setups of a data asset. And then after that, we're going to go over data tables. So a lot of really cool stuff going on. I hope you guys are excited because data is probably one of the most important things of any game creation because the easier you can store and then access your data, the easier you're going to have for of time when coding your actual game. So that's going to close it out, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, stay animated.